Yo people, hope you're all well and welcome to another video. This is going to be a quick video showing you some ways that you can make Guild in Final Fantasy XIV using just your gatherers. Gathering is a great way to make Guild and Chill and although you won't make as much as crafting, you can still make a decent amount as long as you know the optimal methods. Although there are many different methods to use, I'll be focusing on the ones that I found most efficient during my time making Guild as a gatherer. I will also be showing you a quick example later of how long it takes me to gather around 99 of each material along with the skills and items I use to make it quicker. So there are some things that I would advise to have before starting. I would highly recommend getting your gatherers to max level as a lot of the methods I'll be mentioning will have high level restrictions. Saying that, you will be able to apply some of the logic I will use for lower level materials so feel free to keep watching even if you don't have your gatherers at 90. If you need help with leveling your gatherers, feel free to check out my gathering guide here. Also try and get yourself a full set of eye level 560 gear with some basic melds. A set should be fairly cheap on the market world now and having this will just make your gill making a lot quicker. You will for sure make back the gill you spend on this in no time. Make sure to stock up on your core jewels or high core jewels. Core jewels can be purchased on the market board for cheap or they can be purchased at your grand company for seals. High core jewels can be purchased using white scripts from the script vendors. These will be essential as you will be constantly needing to use skills to maximise the quantity of items you gather whilst gathering. I would also highly recommend trying and getting as many of the Endwalker folklore books unlocked as you can. These are not essential, but they do unlock access to more of the expensive modes. You can get these books by purchasing regional folklore traders token C for 100 white scripts each at the script vendors and then turning them into this NPC in Red Zatan. Again, this isn't essential if you haven't already done this, but it would be a good idea to try and get this done when you can. I'd also suggest getting flying unlocked in all zones as well, as this will speed up the process of travelling between nodes. Last thing before starting, it would be a good idea to use a notepad or an excel sheet. This will help significantly as there will be many items that you will need to note down and to keep track of. It will just help to manage your time when heading out to gather materials again in the future as you can check your notes instead of having to search for all the base material items again. Just something to keep note of, gathering material prices fluctuate consistently, so any prices mentioned in this video for some of the materials will be relevant to to the time of making this video. Materials are constantly going up and down, so just be prepared to do some research before setting out on your gathering journeys. So now let's get into some of the methods. So the first method that we'll be looking at will be focusing on in-demand crafted gear. There will always be a market for crafted gear, whether it's for best in-slot gear for gatherers, crafters or combat classes. So collecting materials for these crafts will always net consistent profit. To start, we will need to take a look at the base materials needed to craft these items. Let's use the classical set pieces as an example, which is the current best in slot crafted gear for combat classes. If we go through the raw material list and search for gathering methods for each item, just focus on the ones that populate any information. If you're not a crafter, then you may not have this option unlocked, so you will need to use a third party website in order to see the base material items needed for these crafts. I will put a link in the description for a website that I use. Using this website, you can then just search the base material items via the gathering log. Keep note that some of these items will be hidden if you don't have the required folklore book unlocked, which I touched on earlier. So now just make sure to make a note of any of the items that are populating any gathering information. For example, let's look at the Kondrai, Ambrosia Water and the Light Jabara. All of these are currently selling for around 350 gil each and are also selling very frequently. A few days ago the waters were at around 750 gil so this just shows how much prices can fluctuate. We can also see that Luna Adamanti is a timed node so we could add these to the list and grab them whenever they spawn. Before moving on to the next method, let's head out and gather 99 of any of these materials. I will show you a time lapse video just to show you how long it takes me to get 99 of these with my current stats.
so as you can see it took me between three to five minutes to grab these the only skill that i was really using was king's yield 2 which increases number of items obtained by two and then popping call jewels on cooldown the botanist equivalent skill for this would be blessed harvest 2. i also enabled the quick gathering methods to make it easier this just allows you to click the node once and then it will gather the materials for you so if we sold these for around 350 gil each we would have made 35k in just three to five minutes which actually isn't that bad if you take note that a few days ago the waters were at 750 gil then that would have been 75k that you would have made in three to five minutes so for the example that i use you can use the same logic and just look at other popular crafted items out there and also just look at the materials that you need for these items as i said before that prices will always fluctuate up and down so just keep note of these and check the prices whenever you're deciding to go out on a gathering adventure now for the second method we're going to be looking at raid buff foods and potions if we have a look at some of the raid foods these typically require more base materials than the potions so using the same method as i mentioned before just note down the materials that are gatherable and that are selling for the highest amount and most frequently at the time and then just do a quick calculation to see which ones will be most profitable for your time the next method we'll be looking at would be using purple and white gathering scripts. So just touching on the Aether Sands that I mentioned earlier, these can be purchased from script vendors for scripts. You can spend white scripts on the Aether Sands selection from Shadowbringers content and purple scripts for the Aether Sands selection from Enderwall content. I'd suggest having a look through each Aether Sand and seeing which one is selling for more often. These Aether Sands are used in important high-end crafts, so they are highly sought after. For getting the scripts, I'd suggest using a third-party website to note down some collectible nodes to keep on rotation and just gather them as they pop up. There are also other things you can spend purple scripts on, for example materials required for some food crafts and these also sell for quite a bit. For white scripts, if you haven't already got all your folklore books unlocked, I would highly advise for you to focus on this first before spending it on anything else as the nodes you unlock will net you good profit down the line. Now let's look at gathering retainers. Maxing your gathering retainers is a great way to make some extra gil through ventures. You can send your retainers to get specific materials for you which you can sell. Personally I found that fishing has been extremely profitable as there is specific fish used for endwalker leave quests which has been selling consistently since the release of endwalker. Fishing retainers netted some good profit because you could send them to get sweet flesh oysters and roe shrimps. These were extremely expensive at the time because they actually took some time to gather if you wanted to do it yourself. So hopefully when the new master recipes are released and and new materials are needed for the new crafts maybe there will be some new fishes that you can send your retainers out to gather which again will start to net some good profit so if you haven't already done so i would highly suggest getting your gathering retainers up if you had to pick one i'd suggest going with fishing this is just because it's easier to manually use botany and miner to gather your materials than it is to fish for a high stack that's in my opinion anyway so the last method that we'll be looking at will just be scoping the market board. If you're not max level yet and you just want to make a bit of guild to keep yourself ticking until you get to max level with gathering, then a good option will be to just scope the market board for popular or in demand materials to see what you can gather. Check out the prices for each node on the market board and just keep tab of the ones that are selling for at least around 300 guild each I'd say. As mentioned before, you do want to keep track of the prices for these items because some items can also be more expensive the next day or they can also be a bit more cheap the next day. Just keep tab of the ones that are the most popular and the ones that you see selling most frequently because at least with these you know that they will sell often. So that concludes our video. I would say that these methods were the most profitable for me when I used to use gathering as a primary source of making money and I hope that these methods also help you. If you found this video helpful in any way then please like and subscribe and if you have any other good money making methods that you can suggest using gathering then please comment below. On that note I'll see you in the next video. Peace.